Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I like to nerd out to the signs of how to keep houseplants happy in our homes and how we can divide them. So if you're into that kind of content, give me a like and subscribe to my channel. This will let me know to make more content like this. So today's video, we have a massive fern that I got about three months ago. Uh, as big as this looks, it's it actually has died back a little bit. We have been seeing a lot of crispy leaves and uh, I do water these every day. But if you look inside the soil, it's actually uh, very depleted. There's not a lot of soil left in there. It's just a bunch of dried roots. So, and also at the same time, this pot is way too big to manage. I can't really style my home with this massive pot of fern. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna divide this into various sized pots. I may even do you know, a bit of a propagation where I, I stick just a strand or two of the ferns and watch them grow and develop into something like this. Okay, so the first order of business is to take this out of the pot and divide it. have a few casualties here but that's okay these guys grow so fast but this is so beautiful look at that nice Harder than it looks, everything's twined together. Let me see. Okay, so this is harder than it looks. So, what I already see here is that there are clumps that are together so for example this one I may actually just yank it off and I, I can't divide this without doing any kind of I can see some growth down here so it's, it's doing well I'm gonna break some roots for sure but I know that these will grow really fast they will recover I'm gonna be careful not to break uh, the stems of the ferns that are currently in this mess. So here's one and as you can see it's got some roots on here and it's got some babies growing out. Some of the leaves may die off, some of the uh, not leaves, fronds may die off and that's okay because as long as the roots are healthy this will continue pushing out growth. So for the next three to six months this, this plant is just going to be in recovery mode. I'm going to continue uh, breaking apart the rest. Uh, I won't, I won't bore you with uh, the video, so we'll cut to after we've divided these. Okay, so I have divided up the plant. I just basically yanked them off, trying to keep as many root systems in there as possible. And this is such a cute bucket of fern. It looks so good on its own. This is maybe a, 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 an inspiration for me to, to plant the fern a little bit deeper so that it kind of pokes out of, the, of the, the, the edge of the pot rather than having it, you know, be planted way up, on the, having the soil level way up close to the pot lid. And 
the last piece is this giant center piece. Um, I, this cute little girl here. I love looking at little little baby uh, fronds coming up. And this, I basically did not disturb the root system. I know that this is pretty robust, and this is gonna be probably probably gonna become my main plant because there, there's so much healthy roots here. So, yeah, I'm gonna need I don't know maybe ten to twelve pots. Yeah. So let me get started. I'm gonna clean up and I'll be back. Okay, so I lied. I'm not gonna clean up. I realized that I am going to use the... Because I'm a cheap bow like that. I'm gonna reuse the uh, media here. And of course I'm gonna mix some of the medium as well. So maybe let me quickly go through with you some of the mediums that we are gonna use for the fern. Again, I don't ever use ratio or measurements. I just kind of eyeball it. So I like to mix soil with my, my, my soil mixes with my own hands and pretend my hands are the roots to see how they absorb water and to see how, how fast they dry out uh, and if the, that particular plant likes it uh, a little bit more damp or if they want to dry out faster and if they want a lot of organic material in it. So all these I, I put into a factor when I mix my soil. I do see a baby caterpillar here. All right, so without further ado, uh, first contender is this parent plant. Obviously, this is going to be pretty much going into its own uh, soil medium because it's already used to living in, its, in the current soil. So let me see. I would be really freaked out if I see a, an earthworm right now. Sometimes earthworms like to live in the in the soil, so but I don't see any. Just jam it in there. I might back off watering uh, a little bit because, I mean, previously I water it every day, but now that there's only a little bit of plant material and a lot of medium in this soil, it I don't want to drown the. the I, although, although I've never heard of an overwatered fern before, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you can overwater them, but uh, comment below if you know. Uh, so here's one. Yeah, again, I'm gonna back off watering because I don't want to. I don't think the plant needs that much water currently. So there you go. And I'm gonna keep keep on potting up the rest. This is a pretty nice size too. If you see any broken stems, go ahead and take them off because they're not gonna recover. A broken if it's if it's snapped, it's gone. It's done. But again, these these guys actually, I mean, I know that a lot of you have troubles with fern, but here maybe in, in my climate in Indonesia, ferns actually grow super fast as long as you don't let them dry out. Maybe it's the humidity, and um, uh, maybe it's just the the sunshine that we get we I mean we don't have winters here so we, we don't go through periods of you know, darkness or whatever and uh, ferns love bright sun just so you know they can even take some direct sunlight I know that a lot of people say oh ferns are low light plants if you look in the jungle um, they actually like to be on on the canopy on, a, on high up on the canopy on the treetops and they can take quite a bit of sunlight. Okay, so I don't have a work table, this uh, disclaimer. <laughs> this is why I, I put up all my plants on the floor. <laughs> Let me get a white pot this time. I like to get different color pots and sizes as well. Like, like I said, I want to play with styling later, so. Okay. 
this is a bit of a good price. So one thing's going through my mind right now. I hope the camera's actually rolling. I hope I pressed record. <laughs> Pretty sure I did. <laughs> it would be hilarious if I didn't. So I see a little bit of fuzz here. I suspect mealy bugs. Or no, not really. I'm gonna just pluck it off anyway and just take off the take it off the plant. So we are out of the medium that the plant came in, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix my own medium now. So haha, ha, I cheated. I have a little bit of leftover uh, uh, potting soil from, from dead plants. <laughs> and in it is a worm casting, uh, some burnt rice hulls, perlite, but to that I'm going to add uh, these uh, these are uh, twigs, uh, dried twigs. So they give a lot of aeration in the in the soil, and it, it gives you like that 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 same. It replicates the jungle floor feeling. Um, a lot of local nurseries here use it. I'm not sure if you can find those overseas. And these, I believe, they break down over time, so they become organic material. And next, there's these dried bamboos that are. Um, very inexpensive here and the original uh, fern had this in the medium so again this is very airy very light and it dries up pretty fast so again to repeat my recipe um, uh, cocoa peat perlite burnt rice hull dried twigs dried bamboo and worm casting Seriously, just eyeball it. Okay. You can take out perlite uh, from this mix if you, if you you don't really need it. Let me do a small one, actually. There's these two little babies. I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna grow into plants. So it'll take quite a bit of time, but I love baby plants. So there's all these uh, there's all these uh, dried stems uh, from the parent plant. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna take it off later. I'm gonna prune prune them off. You should you should prune your ferns because any any dried twigs here is just gonna stay here forever. And when you have a bushy plant, this is gonna be in the way. Like like growth are gonna continually push out from the bottom. And if these and it's crowded with dried twigs on top then you know your fern's not going to grow as well. So I'm going to have to give them a good prune after. So I'm going to continue potting these up because I have so many more. I have like maybe 10 more pots and I don't want you to bore you to death. So I, may do, I probably will just do a family portrait after I'm done potting up so you can see what everybody looks like. Uh, yeah, see you later. All right, so here's the family portrait. I counted 13 pots, so that's quite a lot, a lot more than I had hoped for. Again, these are gonna take quite a while to reach a decent size. I would say anywhere from nine months to a year, but I am patient. 
So what I did was I actually added some slow-release fertilizer on the top of the soil as well as some uh, insecticide. It's more systemic. This is to prevent any pests uh, from, from living in the soil, from thriving in the soil. Um, you don't have to, but I, I do. And, and it's, I sleep better at night knowing that I, I have that. So I don't know what I'm going to do with all these plants. Um, actually, I have a lot of friends that were supposed to get married this year, but thanks to COVID, they have moved their scheduled wedding date to next year. So these friends are probably going to be getting some bird from me at some point. Um, yeah, or housewarming, any things like that, or plant swaps. Uh, but the adult plant was quite a, um, quite a joy to, to keep, but again, it was just too big to handle. So I'm grateful for this project and to have so many cute baby plants to keep me a company for, for the next year or so. Um, so thanks for watching my video. If you like this kind of content, uh, please send me likes and subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can leave down a comment down below if I'm doing anything wrong or if you have any suggestions for the kind of videos you want to see. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Bye.